What comes to your mind when I say the words Mountain Blade? Is it taking over a kingdom with troops that you've trained up over hours and hours of gameplay? Is it wifing someone and then going into diplomacy throughout the world of Calradia? Maybe it's going onto ModDB and downloading different ways of playing, may it be Lord of the Rings or a Roman mod in single player or even multiplayer? Or is it coming together with clans? People that you never really knew before and you made them as friends having training sessions and having events with other clans together. But everyone has their own idea of Mountain Blade. Everyone has their own experiences, yet Mountain Blade has done something with this. While everyone can play it completely differently with so many varied ways, it always comes back to one thing, the core game itself. And there are a few games that can actually do this. There are a few games that have so many different ways of playing, yet have such a universal love for them by so many different people. And this is why I think Mountain Blade did something incredible. In 2008, a small company in Turkey released a game called Mountain Blade. This was something that hadn't really been done before because it introduced a whole new way of playing RPGs. You might think, how can you really call Mountain Blade a proper RPG? Well, it's not quite. This is because they've taken the whole role playing aspect but added in RTS elements and of course parts from even grand strategies. From training up your troops, finding the best ways the best places to fight, and then deciding where you're going to fight, who you're going to fight, who you want to ally with and who you want to leave in the dust. Then you go into the battles and you command your troops on a more micromanaging scale, part of a whole RTS type playing. But you're actually in the game so it feels more like an RPG. Also walking into towns, going into the tavern, talking to NPCs, having a whole RPG element to it but then pulling out onto the world map later on, getting a whole kingdom together and having to manage all of your towns, where your army is, where the garrisons are and who you're attacking and who is attacking you. There's all these things all put together that make this whole game together and this is just the single player. This doesn't even go into the multiplayer and what they've achieved with this. Of course, when Warbound was released in 2010, it added this multiplayer element where you could get hundreds of players on the battlefield. I think at first it was around 150 players and then up to 200 players and then later up to maybe even 250 players when the Poland Wars came out and some servers can get up that high. It was incredible, people hacking and slashing every which way, ducking at arrows of course, sieging towns, playing all the different game modes such as siege, team deathmatch, deathmatch, battle and even capture the flag. These were all different things that everyone could do and they could all come together to playing but it didn't stop there. I'm sure everyone knows about the clans of Mountain Blade and their own fond memories of it. I'm sure there are many people like me that have actually made a lot of friends from this. Having dedicated training sessions and dedicated clans, having whole ranking structures and hold admin to the thing, having team speak servers with different rooms that you can communicate between, having different detachments in the Polonic Wars regiments, who has ever done that in a game before that wasn't Mount and Blade? Yes, you can get games that can get more people on the battlefield, but people never really work together like they did in Mount and Blade. You can have clans with hundreds of people in games such as Planetside, Call of Duty, Battlefield, but it was never quite the same. There was never these dedicated training sessions where a mechanic could be turned into a whole gameplay element that all revolved around the combat. This one tiny thing that was just perfected to the right amount made and burst the whole clan and fighting system in Mountain Blade. Having the four directional combat that was so simple to learn yet difficult to master meant that clans would get together at the weekends, in the weekdays, every single day. Training, fighting with each other and then testing their skills out at weekly events with other clans that had also been doing the same thing. I remember some clans we used to have a training session every single day. Yes it wasn't necessarily for everyone but we had separate detachments. There was a whole ranking system to it and in these detachments we had artillery, we had line infantry, we had skirmishes. And when I say line infantry, we also had multiple lines within this, we had cavalry as well. And of course, these all did separate trains with their separate officers, with their separate co-leaders, and of course the big guy at the top that controlled the whole thing. And it was so structured and so thought out that it couldn't have been done in any other game. So what is it? What did Mountain Blade actually do that caused all this? Well of course, like I said, it's the combat, it's the mechanics in there. It's also the size of the maps and the size of the players you can get in. But it's also a feel to it. There's a feel to Mountain Blade that I don't think anyone can describe. 
Imagine this, you go back to your first day playing Mountain Blade multiplayer line battles, your first ever clan. You finally meet them, you go into this team speak and you're nervous. You've never really been in a situation like this before, you don't, you don't quite know what to expect. You may have seen a YouTube video and thought it was really cool which got you to get the game in the first place, but when you join a team speak it feels a bit intimidating. There's 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 people in this team speak talking, knowing what they're doing, and they say, here's the server information, come on. And you load up the server, and what you see is something that you probably have never seen in the game before. People are lining up. There's orders being given out and people are actually following them to the T. If they don't, they get punished for it. And you are in awe. You are told to join in with a line. You are then taken by a sub-officer to go to a place where you do some melee practicing. You're practicing your chambering. As people are stabbing, you have to get the timing perfectly right as you stab back and you hear that satisfying clink. And then finally the sound effect as your bayonet goes into the leg of the enemy. And it feels great. The first time you get a successful chamber is a feeling like no other in Mountain Blade. But it's time for an event. Now you've never been to an event before, you've never really seen what these are like apart from on YouTube, and you thought they look pretty badass. But you get in, but you are one soldier in a team of 99 other soldiers. You find your clan that you've trained with, but next you're another line. You've never seen them before, this is another clan that are on the same team of you but have also been training. You then communicate with them. You say hi to them, but then you go off in your line. You hide behind some hills, but then you see the cavalry of the enemy charging towards you, and your officer says cavalry circle. This is only something that you did for 10 minutes in training, so you're not quite sure about it, but you find your place, and you crouch down, and you look left and right of you, and you can see your teammates have done the same. The cavalry then pull off and go away. Later on, you're in the battle, and you see a line coming towards you. Your officer tells you to line up, face right, present, and fire. The whole line does it as one and then he issues a charge, and you charge him with bayonets with your fellow companions either side of you going into the fray. These are some things that I think everyone that has played a Mountain Blade multiplayer battle has witnessed, but there's never anything like the first time it happens to you, and that's something that me personally will never forget. The first time I saw a line battle, the first time I saw a train, the first time I saw a team speak of people that were actually willing to follow orders, to learn, to practice this game, and become better than the other clans that they were fighting against. Of course this foray into the multiplayer world of Mountain Blade was special, but it wasn't as special as the first time I downloaded mods. For starters, the Persistent World mod. Now I say that Mountain Blade just has this feel, and I feel like Persistent World mod also has something on top of that, something that has never been captured before, and that is very self-explanatory towards the spin-off mods that have been tried to do for Mountain Blade Persistent World mod, where they'd all be these open world sort of RPG style things, but like feudal worlds, Persistent Kings, they've never really had the same traction. They might have been better thought out, but they were never the same. People always went back to Persistent World because of one thing and no one could really explain why. After you've been playing Mountain Blade for a while, and you download this Persistent World mod, maybe a friend told you about it, and you load into the world, this isn't Mountain Blade, this is not the Mountain Blade you knew. This is something completely different. I remember I was completely awestruck by the open world nature of this mod, and you could actually do pretty much anything that you could imagine. Even just small things like being a lumberjack, chopping down trees and then selling them, was so satisfying because it was something that you never thought you could really experience in this way in a game, let alone a Mountain Blade game. Now, Persistent World is one of those very controversial things where everyone hates it but loves it at the same time. Like I said, so many people tried to make it better, but everyone just kept coming back to this same mod. It had so many different clans in it, but you didn't even need to be a clan. You could be an Outlaws. I remember one of the first clans I was in was owned by a guy with a brilliant name called Bad Rim Beans and it was the deserters. This was an outlaw clan and I remember my best memories was us getting our really shitty gear on. We had like nothing. We had cloth arm, we had bows and arrows and maybe a sword and then we'd just sit and wait on top of the ruins and we'd wait for a peasant to walk past and we'd halt them. We'd all suddenly run out of the ruins and surround them, bows drawn, sword sharpened, ready to do anything if they moved and we'd rob them and it'd be fine. But then every now and then someone in heavy armor, a knight from a clan would come and we'd risk it. He'd be halted, we'd surround them again, but all of a sudden, we could hear hoover in the background. They had called their allies to come and help them, and we had to run away, because of course, we couldn't quite deal with that just yet. But it's these things that make this game so memorable, and so good to play, the little stories that you can get from it. And that's what Persistent World offered. 
but so many mods came in Mountain Blade and did this sort of thing. The same with Full Invasion 2, absolutely great with clans, absolutely great with subscribers to play, having shield wars, fighting off, the best way to play that mod is when you get a group of people that will actually work together. It feels incredible. A Mountain Blade managed to start its own community. It doesn't matter how many people complain about Banlord. It doesn't matter how many people say they love Mountain Blade. What matters is that Mountain Blade has managed to create this community that will always love this game. That always have their own stories and memories from this game to tell. There is not a single player in Mountain Blade, if you ask them, that doesn't have their own story or their own favourite memory of a clan or a battle or a single player game or a mod that they have experienced in the past that they have never forgotten. And this is what Mountain Blade has done over any other game. It started a genre of its own. It started a way of playing of its own. And this is why I think Mountain Blade, no matter how long it takes for games like Banlord to come out, I feel like Warband has its place. It will never die because it's something very special and different. And this can even come with some downsides. Some people might think that things like Persistent Worlds and the standalone Mountain Blade mods, such as whole fascinations of war and wigs and toys and war of rights, have never really been so successful because everyone keeps coming back to Mountain Blade. Could the same happen with Banlord? Could we all get a nostalgia and just come back to Warbands? I feel like that won't happen. If it's going to happen to any game, it would happen to Mountain Blade. And I know this has been a bit of a video of me just gushing about this, but I sort of wanted to talk about it. I sort of thought it was necessary to talk about just how important this game is to not even the historical gaming community but the PC and now console gaming community in general. What are your favourite memories? What are your favourite stories about Mountain Blade? Make sure you leave them down in the comments. If this video gets to 500 likes, I'll be releasing my Why Daisy Failed video, which could cause some controversy, um, but that's the best type of video. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Make sure you click the link in the description to come and join my Discord. We have some good times there. I would love to see you on there. But thank you so much for watching. And until then, I will see you in the next one.